Well here it is, the dreaded EO2. You've done everything, you've done all that they tell you to do on the Best Way website. I'm going to show you how to take this puppy apart. And believe me, it's not that hard. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I've undone six screws around the side there. This comes off. As it comes off, look out for this connector here. This goes up to the top control panel. Press the little switch, the little flick thing. That will come off. You don't need that anymore. So, looking in here, we have got this is plastic safety cover over the electrical items. This is a 12 volt power supply to the water pump. This is the air pump. And this is potentially one of your issues with the error or two. This is the water sensor. So I shall now take that apart and show you. You can see here I've um, already changed the sensor on this one once before. So first thing to do is we unclick that difficult to do with uh, only one hand we unscrew this little screw here this is the sensor that you can change linked in the description below as to what its part number is you can order one of them it will cost you around about in the UK 10 pound um, and is a magnetic reed switch. So there's a magnet underneath in that little mechanism, which we'll look at in a moment, that closes this normally open switch. Okay, oh, incidentally, great way not to be scared is, you can see that this is a black connector. There's another connector here, which is red. And under here, we'll see everything is also labeled. So it's impossible to put these back together wrong, which I quite enjoy. Okay, so I'm now going to take that off. I've put the sensor back in here. It was literally just four screws. This comes off. Mind your rubber ring there, that's your seal. And in the bottom of here is um, the magnet that activates the sensor. Sensor's back in there, magnet. The water flow pushes the magnet flat like that. And there you can see it's the same shape. Pushes the magnet flat against the sensor and activates the floor sensor. So the way to do that is to put a um, meter down those two holes there. And it should be, when the wood, that's normally open, there will be no resistance. When you close it, you will see that there is a resistance on that. So. Also, a good thing to do, have a look, is there any hair and stuff stuck in there? There probably shouldn't, and there probably isn't. Next, I'm going to take off the cover here. I've taken the two screws out of this one. That just lifts up, no problem. Now you can see here, everything's labelled. There's a nice A, A, B, B. See that, yeah. C1, I believe, C2, D, E, E. And on the back here underneath there, I can't see just at the moment, we have got exactly the same written. I'll tell you what these are while we're here. Heater number one. Forgive me. Heater number one are these two. Heater number two are these two. Power into the device pump and power to, sorry, air pump and power to the water pump. I'm going to undo these row of screws along here and then we'll take out this control unit. You can see here that these are spade connectors, you just need to undo the screws just a little bit. And oddly enough, for all that there are points down there to screw this in, on my unit this wasn't screwed in at all, but that's okay. Remember the red and the blue I was telling you about? Just disconnect them. The blue, incidentally, that's a thermal cutout switch because that unit is the heater there. I didn't mention this earlier. This is the reset switch for the temperature. It goes through just a little magnetic to this little switch here, 
and we do also need to take these two spade connectors off in order to liberate this. Right, so that is now liberated. Did I call that a thermal reset switch? I hope I did. Here we have the pump for the, for the water pump itself. That's just a 12 volt power adapter. It's a standard power adapter, so if your pump does break, you certainly can replace that easily. That is removed by undoing these two screws, one there and one there. I'm also going to take out the heater um, things, these holding any things, whatever they're called. Um, screw on each side of there, screw on each side of there, and this is the earthing um, connection, which is very important. You'll notice that this one goes off down there. That will annoy you later if you drop it down, so be aware. Taking out the 12 volt adapter for the pump itself, just you can see that's not very bright, is it? Sorry. Um, this here is a simple twist off plug, which I'll do with my hand. So you can see that's just a two pin 12 volt out, and in fact, it says on here exactly what that is 240, 220, 240 in 50 hertz. 12 volts out, um, max 60 V8, and that will now drop down there and annoy you later, I promise. So I've liberated that power supply. The other part, when I took this off earlier to remember, the blue wire that we talked about, that is purely a thermal sensor and gets jammed in underneath the white plastic um, holding things, and that just keeps that on there. So uh, make sure you keep that safe, you'll be wanting him later. What well, next part that you need to look at potentially is the um, clogging within this device. This is the heating unit, so I'm going to undo these two screws and then, oh, I need to undo these two screws as well. And that should go and come out. Incidentally, when I take screws out such as those, I like to put them back in where they came from so I know I'm not going to lose them and uh, I have a nice sample of shot glasses here which I put all of my screws in in different places make sure that you don't get your screws mixed up because some of them are different sizes having taken these screws out we know that is loose there you can see the whole unit is rocking it is all free these are the heater wires and under there there is a push to fit um, pipe thing. So I should just be able to pull this up. There we go. That whole unit now out. That's the heater unit. You can have a nice little look down here. Let's see if we can get you some nice light in that. You can see it's all clear. So there may be calcium buildup. Is it calcium? The white stuff. Lime scale in there. So let's take that out by looking at removing these three screws, these three screws and these six screws and then you just simply pull them off. So I've undone the six screws on this one and you pull this up it's literally just got a rubber seal in there and then it comes up and you can see in there however oh, you can't because it's dark, let's see if I can get you into the light it's nice and clear in there there's no lime scale build up in that side I will open the other side as well and show you I'm pouring water on myself as well okay so having undone all of those screws there just bear with me while I make you dizzy take that off and you can see through there this one is very clean all the way through so I'm now going to put this end back on and I'm now going to reassemble that. Oh, sorry, before I do that, you can see also in here the, um, the, the screws falling on the floor, um, but also in there um, is potential cloggage areas. And um, I'm going to pick those screws up now and um, put it all back together again. So I've um, screwed 
this back on here after spending 20 minutes looking for screws um, this end on here remember when you're putting stuff back together that the rubber seals are not supposed to be um, broken or twisted or whatever otherwise you'll get bad water seal I'm going to put this back in now you must remember to that the flow of water goes from here through to here that way and this works by closing that so make sure when you put it in it goes the right way in and not the wrong way um, otherwise that's just silly so you can see I've now screwed that back in position incidentally I've seen this little bit of unit here on eBay for sale for about £25 um, don't do it because like I say it's just 10 quid for that little sensor that goes in the top next we'll be moving on to looking back down here there's a little hole camera doesn't show it much justice certainly can't see much down it but down at the bottom of that is your impeller which is potentially the next point of um, blockage and I think that's what's wrong with this one although I'm not 100% yet so what we're going to do is undo the screws there which hold the, just, the main power supply in and then this whole plastic unit the top just comes out it just lifts out so you can make it move a little bit for you there but you will have issues with these so before we can lift it out we need to take these off that off this off and um, and then there's a lot of jiggling and poking so we'll do that this is the only thing that you need a flat screwdriver for everything else so far has been one Phillips but and to make this little unit lighter I'm going to also take off this pump um, air pump section uh, there's a little filter under there you can just two screws will take that off just a little form air intake filter and there is one two three four screws just holding that on and that will pop straight off having undone the four screws around here this is quite a tight fit so it's a two handy jiggle and pull and um, you can see that's the uh, pump there there is like I said a filter underneath there two screws you can check that if you're in a particularly dusty environment next thing you need to do is flip the unit upside down I have already done this while the camera was off and remove four screws in this base plate here that will come off bringing the earth lead with it so we'll put that to one side and now is the difficult part that I was talking about earlier of you don't have to do this you can maybe work in there but you can take out this whole unit now from here bit of a pain to get those through there they will come out and um, jiggle and wiggle and pork and you can liberate the whole thing so now we don't need that we'll put that on the floor and here you have non-return valve for the airflow so the air blows bubbles into your spa that stops all of the water going up into the system and this is the other thing that you might need to look at if you're getting error or two so I'm going to take these screws off I'm going to first of all I'm going to take these two screws out and pull this away from the black plastic then take those screws out and then we'll have a look inside it I've undone these screws on the front of this now they are um, they're not screws, they're actually nuts and bolts and the hex nut goes in the back of this unit. And we can simply pull that out there now. Well, we could if you had two hands, just bear with Boom, and as if by magic, there it is. This is the impeller, um, 12 volts, and it's magnetic, comes out. A little magnet on there, it all runs, it's all nice and... Um, watertight of course and there you go that's your impeller and that could also be clogged as you can see mine isn't so uh, quite what the problem with mine is uh, oh magnetic like I said ah, lovely come on yay um, 
pipes are all clear. So after you've done all of that and it still doesn't work, you're as clueless as I am. But there you go, at least now you know how to take it apart. Well, fantastic. Check it out. Only 12 degrees. Turn the heater on. Get that warmed up and I'll be enjoying a jacuzzi tonight.